हेलो एंड वेलकम टू करेंट अफेयर्स बूस्टर प्रोग्राम पावर्ड बाय इनसाइड साइज दिस कोर्स इज डिजाइंड टू स्ट्रीमलाइन एंड बूस्ट योर प्रीलिम्स प्रिपरेशन ऑफ 2020 सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द फर्स्ट इशू दैट इज योर सोइल हेल्थ कार्ड स्कीम व्हाई इट इज इन न्यूज बिकॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू द नेशनल प्रोडक्टिविटी काउंसिल सोइल हेल्थ कार्ड स्कीम हैज लेड टू ए डिक्लाइन ऑफ 8 to 10% in the use of chemical fertilizers and also raised productivity by 5 to 6% that that's why it is a good news it is a pilot project uh, and uh, development of model villages is also being implemented by the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare in the financial year 2019 to 20 so this soil health card scheme also comes under this ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare the program promotes farm holdings based soil sample collection and testing with farmers participation it is to be noted that this project is different from the sansad others gram yojana which was launched in october 2014 with the goal of developing the socio economic and physical infrastructure of the village let's discuss in brief about the sansad others gram yojana already it is told that it it, it was launched in 11th october 2014 uh, and on the birth anniversary of jay prakash narayan a prolific leader and uh, this sansad others gram yojana is especially created to uh, to create this model villages by your member of parliaments and member of parliament in the sense uh, there are th three kind of member of parliaments are there one kind is your elected MPs uh, especially of Lok Sabha and another is elected MPs of Rajya Sabha and another is nominated MPs so in case of this elected MPs of Lok Sabha they will they will have to develop a model village in their own constituency only in case of elected members of rajya sabha they can create model villages in their state respective states only and in case of nominated members they don't have a certain uh, limitation of boundary they can create model villages in any region so in that case sansad adas gram yojana it comes under ministry of rural development and especially uh, the MP took the much more interest uh, uh, regarding developing model villages and uh, a restraint is there that they can't create their own village as a model village. They have to develop another village and uh, district collector also has a power in this if you guys become district collector also you will have uh, you will ha you will direct this uh, sansad adas gram yojana in respect of uh, mean, uh, creating map based programs and after that you have to uh, check the implementation is going in a correct direction or not and uh, infrastructure development public grievance redressal these things with respect to this SAGY scheme would be taken care of by district collector so district collector has an immense power in this so um, let's discuss about your soil health card scheme the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare introduced the scheme on december 5 2015 the soil health card scheme uh, uh, is a printed report which contains nutrient status of the soil with respect to 12 nutrients uh, one is ph electrical conductivity organic carbon nitrogen phosphorus potassium sulfur zinc boron iron manganese and copper of uh, farm holdings will be checked this shc is provided to all farmers in the country at an interval of two years to enable the farmers to apply recommended doses of nutrients based on soil test values to realize improved and sustainable soil health and fertility low costs and higher profits Farmers can track their soil samples and also obtain their soil uh, health card report. It is a field specific detailed report of soil fertility status and other important soil parameters that affect crop productivity. Let's discuss about National Productivity Council. It is a national level organization to promote productivity culture in India. It was established by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India in 1958. It is an autonomous, multi partite and non-profit organization. This non-profit organization is the keyword of this. Let's discuss the next issue that is Bihadeswar Temple. 
Actually, it is one of the biggest Shiva temple in India and it has lots of cultural and religious significance and also architectural marvel is there. So, let's discuss why it was in news because recently the con uh, consecration or also known as Kumbha Visekam ceremony was held at Brihadishwar temple after 23 years in Tanjavur, Tamil Nadu. The ceremony uh, got embroiled in the struggle for supremacy between the Sanskrit and Tamil traditions. After the struggle, the case went to Madras High Court and the Madras High Court allowed the consecration to be performed in both Tamil and Sanskrit recently. So Madras High Court to told that you don't have to struggle for the two languages because the both are important. So you uh, both Tamil and Sanskrit are allowed in this consecration ceremony. It argued that there is nothing either in the Agamas, also known as canonical texts, uh, or in any other religious script to prohibit the chanting of Tamil mantras in the temples. And uh, uh, let's discuss the importance of this Brihadishwar temple. It is also known as Raja Rajeshwar temple and is dedicated to Lord Shiva and is located in Tanjavur, Tamil Nadu. Tanjavur lies in the delta of Kaveri river. That is very very important because uh, one question of prelims was asked regarding this uh, location of uh, uh, religious and cultural significance places and uh, near the rivers. So you have to compare that. We will discuss in up upcoming slides. This, uh, this temple is one of the best examples of Dravidian style of temple architecture built by Chola Emperor Raja Raja Chola in 985 to 1012 to 1014 AD between uh, 103 AD and 1010 AD. The temple consists of pyramid, pyramidal spire. What is this pyramidal spire? Let's see this. See, this is your pyramidal spire is there. It is your Dravida architecture and in case of your uh, Nagara architecture, uh, it is known as Sikhara. In case of Dravida, it is known as Vimana. So this is uh, important. Then this is pyramidal, uh, pyramidal spire is there and is adorned with sculptures and paintings inside the well as outside. The temple entered the UNESCO World Heritage Site list in 1987 and is also part of Great Living Chola Temples along with the Brihadishwar Temple at Gangai Kunda Cholapuram and Airavateshwar Temple at Darsuram. This Brihadishwara temple, which is known as Gangai Kunda Cholapuram in Tamil Nadu, was built, by, uh, built for Shiva uh, by Rajendra I in the early 11th century. The bronze sculptures uh, of Bhogasakti and Subramanya are masterpieces of Chola uh, metal icons. Then let's discuss about Airavatesara temple. Uh, it was built by Chola king Raja Raja II. In the early, uh, in the latter uh, 12th century, the temple consists of a sanctum without a circumambulatory path and axial mandapas. So this uh, actually this is your uh, called uh, sanctum and uh, the circumambulatory path is there. So in this temple, this is absent. Circumambulatory path is absent. The front mandapa is unique and it was conceptualized as a chariot with wheels. Let's discuss the special features of a Brihadishwara temple. It is completely made of granite. The apex structure on the top of the temple is believed to be carved out of a single stone carving. Vimana doesn't cast a shadow at noon during any part of the year. Vimana, Vimana is the structure over the Garbhagriha or inner sanctum in the Hindu temples of South India and Odisha. It is like a stepped pyramid that rises up geometrically rather than the curving Sikhara of North India. This shadow cast is not there and the same kind of feature is located in Jagannath temple which is located in Odisha as well. So let's discuss the next issue that is International Intellectual Property Index. Guys, when you are coming across an, an index, find out that which organization release, release it and what is the rank of India and whether the rank of India has increased or declined with respect to India. These three features are very very important. This is why this uh, index was in news because India has slipped to 40th, uh, uh, 40th position on the International Intellectual Property Index 2020 from 36th uh, which was in 2019. 
इट इज रिलीज बाय यूएस चैम्बर ऑफ कॉमर्स ग्लोबल इनोवेशन पॉलिसी सेंटर द यूएस यूके फ्रांस जर्मनी एंड स्वीडन आर द टॉप फाइव इकोनॉमीज एंड द आई पी इंडेक्स इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी देन इंडिया क्रिएटेड दिस नेशनल इंटेलेक्चुअल राइट पॉलिसी ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन टू डेवलप दिस इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी एंड दिस पॉलिसी एनकम्पासेस एंड ब्रिंग्स टू ए सिंगल प्लेटफॉर्म ऑल आई पी आर्स टेकिंग इन टू अकाउंट ऑल इंटरलिंकेजेस एंड दस एम्स टू क्रिएट एंड एक्सप्लोट सिनर्जीज बिटवीन ऑल फॉर्म्स ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी कंसर्न स्टैच्यूट एंड एजेंसीज Uh, with with respect to that also the rank is not good so we have to try more us chamber of commerce it is the world's largest business federation the 2020 us chamber international ip index title art of the possible the next issue is your ins currents why it was in news the third scorpion submarine currents will be delivered to indian navy by december 2020 and what is this scorpion class submarine actually diesel electric propulsion system is there in this scorpion class and with that additional air propulsion system is there what is this air independent propulsion system Uh, actually conventional submarines use a diesel electric engine and must surface for oxygen required for fuel combustion if fitted with an air independent propulsion uh, system the submarine needs to take oxygen in less frequently so that it won't come to surface regularly and won't be uh, visible to the enemy people and so that it can hide it uh, for a long time Then this INS Currents is part of Project Seventy Five and was launched in January twenty eighteen. It is currently in advanced stages of sea trials. Then we will discuss about Project Seventy Five. It is a program by Indian Navy that entails building six six Scorpion class attack submarines. The program has been undertaken with a transfer of technology from French company Naval Group, formerly known as DCNS, at the Mazagaon Duck Limited. The submarines in the P-75 Scorpion class are powered by conventional diesel electric propulsion system. The first uh, Scorpion submarine Calvary was commissioned in 2017, and it would go for a normal uh, refit after six years in 2023, during which time the air independent propulsion system would be installed. This AIP technology is being developed by DRDO to provide submarines long range and extended endurance capabilities under sea. Second Scorpion Khandari was inducted in September 2019. The remaining submarines Vela, Wagir, and Waxir is the series are in uh, are in advanced stages of manufacturing and trials. So already we have mentioned six Scorpion class submarines. One is your INS Karans. Second is Calvary. Third is Khandari, and others are Vela, Wagir, and Waxir. I am telling you about Scorpion class submarines. If you consider that India has already developed this nuclear powered submarine, then you know that INS Aryan is such a powerful submarine is there in India, and it is your. Nuclear powered submarine. Please try to differentiate between Scorpion class submarine, nuclear powered submarine, and other submarines. At there as well, we will discuss according to the current affairs. Let's discuss the uh, next issue that is major port at Vadha one. Why it is in news? Because the Union Cabinet has given uh, its in principle approval for setting up a major port at Vadha one near uh, Dahanu in Maharashtra. With the development of Vadhavan port, India will break into the countries with a top ten container ports in the world. A container port is a port which specializes in handling goods transported in containers. The port will be developed on the landlord model. In the landlord port model, the publicly governed port authority acts as a regulatory body and as landlord. while private companies carry out port operations mainly cargo handling activities the special purpose vehicle will be formed with jawaharlal nehru port trust that is jnpt as the lead partner to implement the project the position of jawaharlal nehru port the biggest container port in the india is 28 in the world in terms of traffic handling capacity with the completion of the fourth terminal of jn port its capacity will increase to 10 million uh, teus that is 20 foot equivalent units making it the 17th largest container port in the world then now let's let's discuss the major ports are there in india so you know kanla 
জেএনপিটি মুম্বাই মর্মাগাঁও মাঙ্গালুরু কোচি অ্যান্ড তুতিকরিন চেন্নাই এন্নোর বিশাখাপাটনম পারাদ্বীপ কলকাতা আর দেয়ার ইন দ্যাট ম্যানার টুয়েলভ পোর্টস আর দেয়ার নাও ওয়াদাওয়ান ইজ অ্যাডেড সো উইট ইট উড বি থার্টিন মেজর পোর্টস ইন ইন্ডিয়া গাইজ রিমেম্বার দ্যাট দেয়ার আর টু কাইন্ডস অফ পোর্টস আর দেয়ার ওয়ান ইজ ইয়োর মেজর পোর্ট অ্যান্ড অ্যানাদার ইজ ইয়োর নন মেজর পোর্ট ইন কেস অফ মেজর পোর্টস দিজ আর আন্ডার দ্য ইউনিয়ন লিস্ট অফ ইউনিয়ন লিস্ট অ্যান্ড এসপেশিয়ালি দিজ আর অপারেটেড বাই স্টেট গভর্নমেন্ট অ্যান্ড নন মেজর পোর্টস দে আর আন্ডার কনকারেন্ট লিস্ট অ্যান্ড অলসো অপারেটেড বাই স্টেট গভর্নমেন্টস অ্যান্ড ইন দ্যাট রেসপেক্ট ইউনিয়ন গভর্নমেন্ট কিপস এ ভিজিল অন দ্যাট অ্যান্ড হোয়েন এভার নেসেসারি ট্রাই টু মেক চেঞ্জেস দ্য নেক্সট ইস্যু ইজ মুদু মল্লাই টাইগার রিজার্ভ Why in news recently a rejuvenation camp for captive elephants was inaugurated uh, inside the Mudumalai Tiger Reserve that's why it was in news in and it was in Hindu it was located in the Nilgiri uh, Nilgiri district of Tamil Nadu state at the tri junction of the three states Karnataka Kerala and Tamil Nadu we are discussing about Mudumalai Tiger Reserve this tiger reserve is a part of Nilgiri biosphere reserve which is the first biosphere reserve in India Along with uh, Wainat Wildlife Sanctuary Kerala in the west and this is BTR that is Bandipur uh, Tiger Reserve which is Karnataka uh, at the north and Mukurthi National Park and Silent Valley in the south. The name Mudumalai means the ancient hill range. Indeed, it is uh, as old as 65 million years when western guards were formed. The flora in this uh, the, the flora in this Mudumalai Tiger Reserve is uh, the reserve has uh, tall grasses that is known as elephant grasses and uh, uh, bamboo of the giant variety valuable timber species like teak, rosewood, etc. There, see this elephant grass is very very important and uh, if it is it, it is edible by your cows and uh, your cattle species. Um, uh, if the cow eats it, then the kind of milk production also increase and this elephant grass is very very important. Fauna. This is uh, this is a flagship species uh, fauna are tiger and Asian elephants are there. Other species of fauna are Indian gaur, spotted deer, common langur, uh, Malabar giant, squirrel, wild duck, jungle cat, etc. Among others are found. Uh, let's identify this important national parks and uh, wildlife sanctuaries. Rajiv Gandhi National Park is here and Bandipur is here. After that you can see Tali Malai uh, Reserve is there, Muddambalai Wildlife Sanctuary. And after the, after that, Mukurthi National Park, Silent Valley National Park, Nilambar uh, FD is there, uh, Kalapetta Coffee Complex. This is not important. This uh, national parks and tiger reserves are important, and they can ask in west to east and north to south direction because uh, UPSC is becoming crazy nowadays. So you have to take care of these things uh, in details. You please have a look on this. The next issue is your Kalakat Mundan Thurai Tiger Reserve. It is lies in Tirunel Valley and Kanyakumari district of Tamil Nadu and vegetation types gradually changes from dry thorn forest to dry deciduous. Mundanthurai Tiger is a sanctuary was declared a nation's first tiger sanctuary during 1962, much before tiger conservation was a national focus. This Kalakkad Wildlife Sanctuary was established in 1976 primarily for conservation of lion-tailed macaque. Please in comment box mention what is the IUCN list of this lion tail macaque because in previous uh, lectures we have already discussed in details about this lion tail macaque. River uh, the Thamir Barani and 13 other rivers originate from uh, this uh, Kalakad Mundan Thurai Tiger Reserve. Hence this came tier is called popularly as river sanctuary. This term is important. The next issue is your Satya Mangalam Tiger Reserve. And it is located at the confluence region of Western and Eastern Ghats. This area holds a significant population of tiger, and is its uh, and it is also contiguous to other tiger conservation landscapes like uh, Bandipur uh, Reserve, uh, Mudum Mudumalai and Nagarhol Reserve. It has got a high diversity of a flora and fauna owing to its location. Apart from tigers, the region is noted for uh, elephants, gaur, black buck. Four horned antelope, white backed vulture, and a variety of other creatures. Let's discuss the prelim question of 2019. And famous places there, rivers are there, you have to compare. Pandharpur, 
चंद्रभागा ए सिटी इज ट्रू पांधारपुर इज लोकेटेड इन नियर चंद्रभागा रिवर इन द स्टेट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र एंड तिरुचिरापल्ली नियर कावेरी रिवर इट इज ऑल्सो ए करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट एंड हम्पी इज मालाप्रभा नो इट इज ए रॉन्ग स्टेटमेंट हम्पी लोकेटेड नियर द रिवर तुंग भद्रा सो इट इज ए रॉन्ग स्टेटमेंट एंड वाय आई पुट दिस क्वेश्चन बिकॉज अब इन प्रीवियस वे आई डिस्कस दैट तंजावर तंजावर इज ए फेमस प्लस फेमस कल्चरल एंड अ रिलीजियस प्लेस एंड इट इज लोकेटेड नियर द रिवेरी कावेरी सो दिस इन दैट रिस्पेक्ट आई पुट दिस क्वेश्चन सो दैट द इनकलकेशन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन हाउ यू पी एस इज एस्किंग हुईज कैंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन बी डन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन हुईज एस इन प्रिलिम ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन लाइक दैट अटल इनोवेशन मिशन इज सेट ऑफ अंडर द ऑप्शन सर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी मिनिस्टर ऑफ लेबर एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट नीति आयोग मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्किल डेवलपमेंट एंड एंटरप्रिन्यरशिप सो ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर सो गाइज इन दिस मैनर वील ट्राई टू सॉल्व ऑल द प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन एंड ऑल्सो वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग फोर इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एट द एंड ट्राई टू सॉल्व दैट एंड ऑल्सो इमिडिएट आंसर की इज देयर सो यू कैन हैव ए लुक